Another convenient feature in 90 Second Website Builder is its ability to arrange and align objects. Hi, this is Greg Hughes with another video tutorial. And in this one, I'm going to talk to you about how to work with objects in such a way to keep them kind of lined up. So we're going to be working with the Arrange menu. As you can see, I've selected it up here, the top of the screen. The convenience of working with drag and drop software kind of goes without saying because you can drag and drop things onto the canvas wherever you want them to go, and that's great. However, sometimes you want things to line up perfectly, and so there are tools to make that happen. Let me show you case in point. On this particular page that I'm working on, I have several objects and a lot of little objects that need to stay in a straight line, even though I've just uh, put them where I want on the canvas, sometimes I want them to, you know, not be crooked like they would be if I just drag them anywhere I want, like that. So we want them to line up in a straight line. Well, if you're not really good with your mouse, sometimes that can be tricky to do. So there's a tool that allows that to happen. So I'll show you how this works. So I just messed these up so I could demonstrate. I'm going to select this object and this one. I'm actually clicking on these while I'm holding the shift key down so that I can multiple select. And what I'm going to do is go up to the Arrange menu, and I'm going to tell the software to align these. And I'm just going to line them using the center. So I'll click this, watch what happens to my checkboxes. As you can see, they quickly lined up. Pretty simple to do, and a very convenient feature. Let me show you another example of how you might use the Arrange tool. So here I've used four different shapes. These are actually shapes, not images. So I've used the drawing tools to create these four shapes. And then I put text on top of these. So this is a text object. This is a text object up here. And this is a shape. Now, how did I get them so straight? Well, because when I put this here, maybe it was, you know, I might have just dropped it into place like this. And I had a couple of different ways I can do that. I can use my mouse, obviously, and drag and drop. Or I can actually even use the arrow keys, as I'm doing now, to move things around and I can just eyeball it, so to speak, that way. Or another good way to do it is to use the Arrange tool. So if I select this object and the one next to it I want it to line up to, I could simply go up to the Arrange tool, and this time I'll align the tops. Instead of the center, I'm aligning the top edge. So I'll click that, and you'll see that the box is now aligned. Well, you may be asking, why did the blue box line up with the green box? Why wasn't it the other way around? How did it know? Well, the reason for that is because the last object that you choose will be the one that it lines up to. I'll show you what I mean. If the blue box was here, for example, and the green box is where it's at, if I were to choose the green box and then the blue box and choose Arrange, Align the Tops, you'll notice that the green box moved up because the last object that you choose is the one that it will align to. Okay, so let's fix this. Let me unselect everything. I want these all to align up with the orange box here. So I'm going to choose the blue box, the green box, and then the orange one. And let's align the tops, and they should all line up again. And of course, this one's moved over too far. So one of the ways I can do that, I like to just use the arrow key. In this case, it's pretty easy to see how far to move it over. We're just using some very simple tools here under the Arrange menu to keep things kind of in a nice order. There are some other things that you will use in the Arrange tool. One of them is the Move to Front, Move to Back, Forward, etc. And this is really a handy tool, especially when you're working with drag and drop software, because the advantage, again, of using this kind of software is you can put objects any, anywhere you want, even on top of and behind each other. So for example, this big rectangle right here that I've just selected. This is actually a shape and it's a long, you know, kind of light gray shape. And on top of this shape, I've placed some text and of course my check boxes. But the reason why um, these show is because this shape is behind these objects. If I was to put another shape out here, let me just grab another shape here. I'll go to the drawing tools grab a shape, and draw one out here just for, as an example. You'll notice that this shape is now on top of these things. So how does it get behind? Because as you add new objects, they automatically default to being in front of the previous objects. But sometimes you want to move them from front to back. It's very simple to do. By selecting this shape, let me move it over here so it'll be more obvious. If I was to select this shape, 
and go up to a range and say, move this back. That means move it back one layer. I just moved it back and now this object shows in front because this is now behind that object. But this time, let's say I just want to move it all the way to the back. Instead of moving back one layer, I can move it to the back, to the very back is what that means. So this time I'll click this and you can see it goes behind everything else in front of it. So you see how this is now behind. This actually comes in really, really handy as you're designing more complex websites that have a lot of objects that are up against each other and need to be in front of certain things and behind certain things. It's really easy to do. So this page has become quite complex. As you can see, I have shapes up here. I have text on top of shapes. Here I have a number of shapes. Every one of these stripes is a shape of its own. And then these shapes each have multiple objects on them. Here's a text object, another text object. All of these are on top of my shapes. And then of course, again, my images or check marks that I put here. So this becomes quite complex, but it's easy to do because I can keep everything lined up using the arrange tools, as well as keeping everything in the right, what's called a Z order. In other words, what layer it is on. That means what's in front of what. The Arrange menu also gives me some other options of working with these kinds of scenarios where I have a lot of images. And, and here's a good example of using the locking tool. Now, what would you use this for? Let me give you an example. As you're designing and you're working with a lot of things, it's really easy as you're, say, you know, selecting things, you accidentally move something out of place. I just grabbed the shape and I went, oh, I just grabbed it and I didn't mean to. And now here it is, you know, in the wrong spot. Well, of course, I can always do a control Z and try and get that right back. There we go. But sometimes you don't make it in time and you can mess up things and, and move objects you don't want to move. So one of the things you can do is lock those objects down. So for example, so that I don't accidentally move these shapes or rectangles, I'm going to go through and select them all. So now I've selected all the shapes, oh, the bottom one here. Okay, so now I've selected all the shapes and so that I don't bump them, one of the things I can do with the Arrange menu is I can actually lock all of these selected objects. So now if I click Lock, what happens is it's now impossible to move these. Even if I select this and I try and drag it, what I'm getting is a little lock icon that says, no, nope, sorry buddy, you can't move this. It's locked into place. And that can just be really handy because you're not going to bump it. And that's, you know, not super common, but it can be when you're working with a lot of little intricate um, objects that are all in the same place. I might want to do that with these as well and lock each of these so I don't keep bumping them just in case I'm going to be working close to them. So anyway, that gives you a, some idea of uh, those features that make the design process a lot simpler, very fast to align objects either by the top, the center, the middle, you know, left edge, whatever you want to do. But there are some other things you can do and you can toy with these settings that make it really, really convenient to line things up. For example, when you have multiple objects like this, you can have the software actually space it for you by uh, using the distribute feature. You can distribute the objects evenly, either in a horizontal direction or a vertical direction, and that can be very convenient. Another thing that's kind of fun to work with is the rotate. If I wanted to rotate an object, well, this one's actually locked now, so I can't do anything with it. So let me go unlock that, and I'll unlock that right here. There, now I can work with this again. If I wanted to, say, rotate this image, I could click the rotate button and do that. And what happens is the handlebars actually change next to this image so that I can drag my mouse and just spin this in a particular direction if I really wanted to. Or I could just use the quick way to rotate it by rotating it left 90 degrees or right 90 degrees or flip it horizontal and vertical and all of the things you can imagine you can do. So learn to use the arrange tools because it's a great way to keep your most intricate design work in a straight line, lined up, looking professional and looking its best and a really cool feature of 90 Second Website Builder.